today uh, with the technology we have in uh, southern Africa that they say are 150,000 years old. So uh, uh, in, in my novels, uh, Yahweh went insane and started uh, these religions to enslave people. The more research I do, Harold, the less convinced I am that I was writing science fiction. Well, yes, and basically all religions to a large degree are essentially a method of mind control and uh, manipulation. And certainly the Christian religion is, particularly the way it's practiced in most of the world today. But all religions, in a way, uh, are machines for mind control and manipulation. But when I read the Bible, when I do the research, Jesus, he, uh, he, he wasn't telling you to uh, worship. He was just telling you to believe, you, believe him. And he was telling you that you, you can do what I do and more. In other words, he, I thought he was trying to tell us we could walk on water. We could make changes. Because... We really, uh, we've, uh, we've all got a direct link to the deity, to the creator, in some way or other, and that's what all religions try to express, but I don't think, uh, I don't think the entity that holds our atoms together would endorse a bunch of people going out and beating babies' heads against rocks. No, they wouldn't. Uh, I don't personally practice the Christian religion anymore. But Jesus, uh, we're talking about Yahweh and Jehovah, like the hell you were to pronounce the Hebrew vowels. Uh, Jesus never used that word in the New Testament. You can't find where he ever referred to Yahweh. He talks about my God, my Father God. That's the one he talked about. Is that the same thing as Yahweh? Uh, again, I don't practice Christian religion anymore. You can get into all of that if you want. But it seems to me that that's a bit uh, that Jesus did not refer to the God of the Old Testament, the evil God of the Old Testament, not at all. Is it possible that uh, the, uh, the way I put it at one time, I said, it looks to me like at the Council of Nicaea, the church, the Catholic Church, which is responsible for more of a genocide than the Nazis ever did, under the American, unto the American Indians. Uh, these, uh, uh, this Catholic uh, uh, religion, I, I don't know, it, uh, uh, the whole religion is about control. It's, uh, they, they went out and massacred these people, and then they, they promoted Jesus to God, to the level of God, to keep men like you and I from aspiring to be the kind of man he was when he ran the money changers out of the temple. Oh, I agree with you completely on that, yes. And the, the, I have a, a good article that's on uh, not the liberation front we started right now about the Romans created Christianity. What we have today is a Christian religion that was largely created by the Romans. Remember that Christianity existed for roughly 325 years before the Romans took it over, and a lot can happen during that time. Apparently it was very, very, very different back in ancient times. But we don't have any records hardly surviving at all of that. We do have the Nag Hammadi Nazi texts that were found about the same time as the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found in Egypt and uh, fortunately uh, that made it possible for them to be translated and not be grabbed up as the Israelis did with the Dead Sea Scrolls. But Christian religion, again I say, not just the Christian religion, but most religions or a method of mind control and manipulation. 
and the uh, I, I want to uh, I want to stay on the the Muslim situation. I mean, we know now from the right, and they're they're pretty good. The the elite, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I also want to you you mentioned the Gnostic uh, religion. I mean that, uh, and, and also let's let's talk. Uh, I I've under I heard. I, uh, in my research, it's been pointed out to me that the uh, oldest religion is Satanism, and we just talked. To, we just had somebody on the show before us that talked about uh, the uh, Council of Thirteen, the Illuminati. Uh, they were saying that they were uh, Satan worshippers. Uh, what about? Satanism. I mean, uh, a lot of the Jews say they practice Satanism, and the uh, the uh, Masons say, uh, according to Albert Pike, that Lucifer is the god of this world. Frankly, I think they uh, used Lucifer. Lucifer might have been the good guy, and they just demonized him to make you think he was a devil because they didn't want you uh, gaining a knowledge from him. Am I, it was yeah, I, I, <laughs> again, on NazisLiberationFront.com, I've got an article about Lucifer. He was, in, in essence, the good guy to start with, and he was made into an evil figure by the Illuminati cult. Uh, interestingly, the word Lucifer, out of all, out of in roughly 800,000 words in the Bible and the Apocrypha, the word is only used one time. So what we have today under Lucifer, Luciferianism, greatly comes from the, the, the Masons and other Illuminati uh, cults. In other words, he has been demonized the same way that you and I have by the same people. Interesting. Uh, and uh, you know, one of my one of my friends who uh, does have a church and does operate uh, uh, a business called uh, Timothy Bible College and a little red schoolhouse. You know, he's been attacked and and limited to where he can talk and teach. Because he's pointed out that uh, some of these churches have a, a, a cornerstone put there by Masons for the worshipful Absolutely. master. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, most churches do. The Masons have really uh, put themselves into dominating the church as much as they can. And uh, Masons will tell you that, oh yes, you can be a good Christian and a nation at the same time. When I wrote uh, years, a couple years ago, and I wrote some articles about the nation, I allegedly, uh, I received phone calls from two people who said they allegedly were 32nd degree nations inviting me to join the order. So that's what they do, they try to, to get you, if you oppose them, they try to recruit you they want to teach you the quote-unquote mysteries of the Masonic Order, and that's how they get you in and manipulate you and control you. So, that's it. Yes. The, uh, the Illuminati, the Masons, all that is basically on some level the same thing. And it's not good. It is, it is something that opposes uh, the freedom that we have here in the United States and opposes what you and I believe in for sure. It presents another uh, a, another problem, and uh, 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 we've got two hours here, so we got plenty of time. Uh, we're maybe the second hour, I could, we can approach uh, some of the uh, the answers to here. I mean, the just the last article that I was working on when I got your email. You know, it talks about uh, the uh, Christianity, talks about the uh, Jewish uh, God, talks about uh, uh, the controls that are, you know, in, in, two, uh, in over 2,000 years, 
we had one country, one group of rebels that really tried to do something for the common man. You know, Jesus said the truth would set you free. You know, a lot of truths in the Bible. Like you said, that, that's kind of a handbook for civilization, isn't it? And it gives you the good and the bad, too. It gives you the good and the bad, too. I mean, these, come on, guys. Yeah, this is like real life, isn't it? And what do you think it is? But uh, the way the Christian religion has been used is, again, it's used largely today as a manipulative tool for the New World Order. I hate to put it that way. It's going to piss off a lot of people hearing me say that. It's definitely what I believe, and if you look closely, I think you'll find that that is true. Uh, would you would you repeat that? I, 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 I want to make sure people hear that. Repeat. That if and, and by the way, you know, if anything I say or my guests say on this show offends you, then uh, you've earned yourself the title of idiot. Go ahead, Harold. Repeat that. There you go. No, yes, that the Christian religion, the way it is practiced today, is basically a tool of the of the New World Order, and uh, all churches, except for a very, very, very few. Uh, fall into that category. There are tools of Freemasonry, the Illuminati, and what we call New World Order, and they oppose basically uh, the freedoms that we have in the United States. And most pastors you go to and ask them about any of these things, they're either going to direct the conversation elsewhere, or they're simply going to tell you, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, Unfortunately, we do know what we're talking about, and in the Revolutionary War, it was the pastors, it was the churches that did a, a pretty good job of organizing people and taking up arms to fight the New World Order of that day. The sun never sets on the English Empire. Yes, and, that is absolutely correct. Now let me let me ask you again. I mean, there's a few things I, I've had say I've had trouble with telling people. You know, did uh, the mafia, did the government take over the mafia, or did the mafia take over the government? And uh, I, <laughs> the uh, I think we can say the same thing about this whole Jewish thing. The the uh, Israel as it stands right now. It's inhabited by people that were never from Israel, never from uh, Jerusalem, never part of the, uh, that were never uh, walking the same ground as Jesus and uh, the tribe of Judeo. They manufactured this uh, Jew, they, and they may have manufactured a lot of the so-called Christian religions, you know, turn the other cheek. I'm sorry, you know, I actually I, I do practice that. You can have the first swing. You can have the first swing, and uh, but then I ain't turning the other cheek. Then I put you in the hospital. And there you go. The uh, I, I even have a problem with the, especially the Catholic Church. I mean, they want you to worship an idol of a man hanging on an instrument of torture. I mean, is that uh, is that being a good Christian to? Deify and to make an idol out of uh, the instrument of torture they used to kill supposedly your Messiah? That's essentially what they have done. They took what is, what, if you follow the New Testament and believe all of that, that Jesus, the death of Jesus was a ritualized homicide, a ritual murder, and they, uh, the Catholic Church seems to really, really, really love to glorify that and carry that on. That's the current, the most notable image of the Catholic Church is the crucified Jesus on the cross. That seems to be the case, and whatever the reasons, it's, yeah, it's an, again a tool of manipulation, and uh, if you become a Catholic, you must, of course, go to confession and confess whatever you know about yourself. 
and uh, that night's the Catholic Church. Again, here I'm going to kick people off. But it makes the Catholic Church the largest and oldest intelligence organization in the whole world because they are essentially everywhere. Priests are everywhere. They hear confessions. People tell them all kinds of personal things, about, not only about themselves, but about others as well. That makes them, again, I say, the largest, the largest and oldest intelligence organization in the whole world. So all you'd have to do is put that together with the NSA and the uh, technological advances we've got to allow them to tap everybody's phones, to tap everybody's internet, and uh, they're just expanding that method of control. They use the internet now instead of the grandmothers on the corners in the Soviet Union. Yeah, when you look at the Catholic Church and what it does or has done and still does over the centuries, it makes uh, Julian Assange with WikiLeaks and Edward Snowden with the NSA releases and stuff. Makes them pikers, actually. The Catholic Church is far, far more sophisticated than that. Now that they not only have the tools of old, but they have new tools as well. What are we looking at here, Harold? I mean, you you have done a wonderful job of history, and if uh, if if you're accurate, and I think you are accurate in what you're pointing out here, that uh, we don't we don't have any allies out there. I mean, if the churches are there to suppress us, keep us uh, being, and, and oh, let's see, let me let me see if I can quote from. Paul, from Pauline Christianity, be a good slave. Don't rebel against your masters. You know, I took a little issue with that a number of years ago, and I don't believe Tex Mars has ever spoken to me since. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I believe that for sure. No, it's very true that the the Christian religion, the way it's used by, rough, I would say, at least 99% of them, it's a, a mind control and manipulative tool, and all the churches uh, support what, what we call a new world order. They almost all do, and you can't, most of all, if you go to a pastor to talk about it, he or she is not going to tell you anything. You're going to redirect that conversation to something else they can control the subject matter about. They don't want to hear you talk about any of what, like what you and I are talking about today. It is a forbidden topic. They, uh, I, I do seem to make them nervous. Good for you. And, and the uh, you know, what what has happened just within the last few months? I mean, I, I've referred to myself, Harold, as the canary in the coal mine because I will talk about the Jews, because I will talk, give you the truth about the Muslims, you know, and I will uh, uh, blow the whistle on Christianity, especially uh, the uh, the. Uh, Hagees and the uh, Billy Grahams and everybody else is out there that are just trying to get you to be a good slave and not rebel against your masters. They, uh, they've, they've tried to silence me and they've tried to kill me and now they've killed Rolling Stones, Hastings. They've, uh, they, they uh, killed Breitbart. And uh, they are going after big time any whistleblowers like Bradley Manning. I mean, why is Bradley Manning going through a, a, a court martial for doing what any good American and any good soldier is supposed to do when they see somebody doing something wrong, something against the Constitution? Aren't you exposed to expose criminals, arrest criminals, and and what's happening here? Obama, Obama is not. It's not just Obama either. 
Uh, I've got a site. I've got a link up on my site here to something about called the coup d'état in America, and that really happened when they killed Kennedy and installed the whole Bush crime cartel up here that I've tried to expose my books in the Free America for the last 20 years. Yes, that is very true. And now, younger members of the Bush family are coming out and going to run for office, so the Bush dynasty will continue whether we like it or not. And the, the worst thing I can think of would be in 2016 would be Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton versus one of the Bushes. Whichever one you got, you would have the continuation of the New World Order dictatorship that we both oppose greatly. But that may very well become what happens. And Bradley May should be given a medal for what he's done. But, and, and, but instead, they're going to lock his ass away for years and years and years. They will do that. They will do that. The uh, now, what what uh, in in your studies here? What have you found out about Iran? I have done a lot of history on Iran. The Shah of Iran was a uh, he, he was put in. He was a puppet. The uh, we uh, we gave Saddam Hussein the weapons of mass destruction to use against the Iranians when he was fighting for us over there. And I, I maybe I went to his head or he saw through him and saw, for, uh, saw us uh, Americans for what they really are, tools of the Israelis, and of course then we had to shut him down. So what about Iran? Now, I, they, they have a scientist over there. I don't know if you've heard about him. But uh, supposedly uh, he's rediscovered or reinvented or created the uh, UFO technology, the uh, uh, magnetic drives in the, uh, that uh, can drive a uh, craft through atmosphere or water. I actually wrote about a craft like that 45 years ago. Is, uh, if there's a reason for us to go after Iran, since we've got all the oil now that we've got from Iraq and from uh, Afghanistan, the pipelines uh, there, and Libya. Uh, what's the deal with Iran? Uh, if uh, uh, the women are over there are beautiful, a lot of that, a lot of us uh, white Americans came from that area. Maybe we walked across the Caucasus Mountains to escape uh, Zionism or slavery. And, uh, you know, Iran and Iraq are, are really the uh, birthplaces of civilization. I believe Samaria is in there somewhere, isn't it? Right, yes. Iran is a very misunderstood country. Again, I'm not a big fan of Shiite Islam, but basically Iran is not an evil country at all. And uh, most uh, white nationalists, Maybe you don't know it, but the word Iran comes from the same word Aryan. So they are the, they say them that they are the real Aryans, and that's what Iran means. And yes, it is the home uh, of uh, many ancient peoples that uh, we descend from today. It's a very beautiful and admirable country, and the people, the scientists, the teachers, Educators are very brilliant people, and uh, what you mentioned about the UFOs and all of that, that is only one thing, that they're doing many things to research that, again, the New World Order does not want out there, so they're trying to set it up where we're going to go to war with Iran. I think that's a very evil and, and negative thing for our country to be involved in that. I agree, too. We don't need any more wars. And, uh, God, no. The, uh, and of course, that's what they're doing. I mean, uh, they even bragged about that in, in uh, my film, True Face of FEMA. I filmed the first Homeland Security meeting 
and uh, Colonel John Brinkerhoff is lecturing law enforcement in Albuquerque, telling us that we're going to be in for a long war. This war is uh, uh, maybe longer than the Cold War, and this war is going to be fought on American soil, and the enemy's weak. Well, the enemy doesn't have tanks and planes and helicopters and cannons and bombs, so the enemy's going to use, you know, some uh, unconventional warfare. The, uh, after watching about half of the film, it occurred to me that the enemy he was talking about was the American people. In case of a single outbreak of smallpox, a disease, by the way, he chose a disease that's been extinct in America for a hundred years. I think the last time we saw smallpox here was when the Jews put it on the uh, Indians' blankets when they were trading with them. And uh, we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops to control the American people because some of them just won't follow orders. And it looks to me like uh, what they're preparing for. They're preparing for, they know we're getting tired of this. They know that uh, they're really, uh, we're really approaching a revolution. But it happened in Egypt, and again, here's the, here, we're not getting the straight story on this. They kicked out the Muslim Brotherhood, but they want you to think Egypt's all Muslim, too. What's the, uh, what's the uh, truth on that? Well, the truth is that a, uh, a lot of ancient Christianity comes out of Egypt, and I believe, I don't know the exact statistics, but I believe about 10 or 15 percent of the uh, Egyptian population are Christians, uh, not Muslims. So you have uh, a very strange situation there. It's one of the oldest countries in the world. I thank God that I got to visit there a long, long time ago before all the trouble came. But you wouldn't want to go now. But yes, uh, they uh, took the only freely elected president that Egypt ever had, Mohammed Marsi. Again, I'm not a big admirer of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and all that. But he was the duly elected president, and American backed military coup has taken him out. He's in prison, arrested. We don't know what's going to happen to him. Uh, and they're trying to set up a new government. But uh, how successful that will be will certainly remain to be seen. What about what about the fact that uh, Egypt just had? 16 million people take to the streets, probably the largest uh, demonstration in history. Were they, uh, was that the uh, people being opposed to Morsi? Well, we got both sides of that issue. And I think recently uh, the pro Morsi forces were out in the street and demanding that he be released. What they're going to do, what all that is going to happen with all that, it's very hard to know. Uh, there is essentially a revolution going on in Egypt, and no one wants to use that term at all. But basically, it's uh, what's going on there, I believe, was created by the quote unquote New World Order, and which is essentially American intelligence agencies. As well. Uh, you mean uh, Al CIA? Duh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Absolutely, my friend. And, and uh, you the know, CIA, CIA, and the Mossad. That's uh, and basically in my six here are all the same thing. Yes, they are. Yes, they, they just uh, different wearing a little different uniform, take a little different uh, view of things from the top. But basically, you get down to the core of the matter, they're all basically the same thing. And they're you all working the for the uh, bankers. I mean, all the intelligence agencies, including the FBI, are working for the bankers. My guess is Harold Rome. We, uh, we're talking about, most, well, we're talking about all religions. We're talking about anything we want to talk about. We'll be right back here. Give me two or three minutes to get my coffee warmed up, and we'll be right back. Stay with me, Harold. Okay.
www.radiosource.com. We'll be right back. What do y'all want to remain at the dictatorship? Why are you guys so anti-dictators? Imagine up to America with a dictatorship. You could let one percent of the people have all the nation's wealth. You could help your rich friends get richer by cutting their taxes and bailing them out when they gamble and lose. You could ignore the needs of the poor for health care and education. Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could wire tap phones. You could torture foreign prisoners. You could have rigged elections. You could lie about why you go to war. You could fill your prison with one particular racial group and no one would complain. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. Today, Monday, I Friday, 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 for our Liberation Nation with Deacon John, where America comes to hear the truth. It's hard for you Americans to imagine, but please, please, try it. Uh-oh. 
oh, oh, I must be, I might be having ego problems again. I like to hear the sound of applause. My guest is Dr. Harold Rome. How are you, Harold? I'm doing good, and still with you, and uh, we talked about a ton of stuff, but it's really good. I'm glad that we can have the freedom to be able to talk about these things. Well, that, How long that will last, we'll see. That is the strength of Revolution Radio. Because we haven't had any commercials, we haven't had any interruptions, and we don't have anybody suggesting what we can do. You want to see me get hostile? Tell me what I should talk about. And and you see me? I mean, I'll blow right up in a restaurant, take you outside, and uh, put you in the dirt. I uh, you know uh, I, I just I don't like that. That's divide and conquer. That's what they do. They want to, oh, Harold, he, he, he don't know what he's talking about. That, uh, Clay Douglas, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a racist. He, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what you are. You know, I, I simply want to know the truth. And I believe that if you didn't have these churches and these religions and these uh, organizations like Southern Poverty Law and ADL trying to demonize people, Harold, I believe we've had the answers to everything that's going on here, every problem that we've even mentioned or talked about, I believe we've had the answers for a hundred years. How did, uh, uh, just a, just a quick uh, little quiz here, how did Lindbergh, how did Charles Lindbergh fly a Piper Cub across an ocean? Where did he get the fuel? How could he carry that much fuel on that little small aircraft? That is a very good question. I do not have an answer to that, but that is a fascinating question. How did he do that? Yes. Yeah, it good. was uh, it was because of a man named uh, Lester uh, Hendershot, and he created a fuelless engine, and that's what helped Lindbergh get across. He demonstrated that to him, and that was about 1920. Before that, we had Nikola Tesla, who. Uh, was not uh, who if if he'd had his way you'd be able to walk into your house turn your light on without a single wire dotting the landscape here and he uh, he died in uh, poverty I my friend Paul Pantone invented the Geek carburetor about 25 years ago and they've tried to kill him they've tried to silence him and they've tried to buy him out they've tortured him whatever they could do to Make it not work, not work. I mean, so we've we've had the and and he told me and I've confirmed this that there are automobiles out there that uh, get 75, 80 miles to the gallon. They're in other countries. They won't let them come in here. It's a violation of national security. The same thing with the magnetic motors, with the Hendershot motor. With the Sterling motors, they were all ran without gasoline, and and so so this is part of the enslavement. And ninth plank on the Communist Manifesto is corporate farms. Can you say Monsanto? So here you have a company, worldwide company, that uh, makes poison. They made the Agent Orange. They sprayed us with in Vietnam. They make Roundup, which you spray on your crops. Your animals eat the uh, crops. The animals eat the grass. The weeds are dead, but they, the poison's still there. It's, uh, how do we oppose something like this? I mean, even Edgar J. Edgar Hoover said the uh, common man is kind of stunned when he comes face to face with a conspiracy so vast that uh, so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. Seems like that's where we're yes. at right now. We, we have many things going on like that and as you point out any time throughout history that revolutionary inventions have come forward if they're allowed to come forward at all they are then suppressed and demonized, so they're never really used. And 
against Monsanto that's one of the most evil companies in the world. It's genetically modified food. They're uh, out of poisonous, and they're currently successfully doing it. And how do we oppose this, Harold? This is kind of a trick question. I'm getting around to it. I do have an agenda. I do think I've found an answer because I ask myself, how did we do it 200 years ago? I mean, we settled this whole country. And, you know, Thomas Jefferson even tried to give us a warning, if you'll remember. He said, uh, you know, uh, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land we conquered. Which they have done, yes, they actually have done that, yes. Now, where about do you live, Carol? Your I Texas. live in Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have lunch here. I, 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 uh, I said I, th I think I, I finally made the right choice, you know, again, not to be religious or anything, but uh, it seemed like the uh, body of Christ would be a place, safe place for me to go, as long as we don't have a hurricane. <laughs> as long as I have a hurricane, you got that. Well, I think uh, I discovered from looking about that, uh, Corpus Christi, Texas is the only city in the world named after the body of Christ, as far as I can tell. And we've got the, uh, we've got Columbus's three ships, too, so that ought to count for, for something. Whatever that's worth, yes, yeah, for whatever that's worth, we do have it. Spaniards <laughs> made a lot of money out of that. <laughs> now, I, I said I came up with an answer years ago. And it was called Liberty Villages. And I had planned Liberty Villages to put it on my land over in New Mexico. And uh, this, uh, I just had three acres over there, but it was in, uh, it was still on the map. Two house towns still on the map. And uh, I, I, uh, I figured, well, if I put up some low-cost structures here, like teepees, and I came up with teepees because I figured anybody driving down the street, if they saw ten teepees uh, sitting on uh, a place with a vacancy sign, they might stop in and spend some money. But uh, it was almost right after that appeared in my uh, Free American magazine that I had the accident. So whether the accident was over 9-11, whether it was over building number seven, whether it was over uh, uh, true face of FEMA, or whether it was over Liberty Villages, I don't know. But uh, I, I kind of modified that. And uh, again, one of my other friends has a uh, college and a school, several schools right here in Texas called uh, Timothy Bible College and Liberty and uh, uh, Little Red Schoolhouse. And if we were educating our children in in our homes, and uh, we wouldn't have Columbines or we wouldn't have uh, Sandy Hooks or Newtowns. And um, if we were growing our own food and generating our own power on our house rather than uh, depending on that uh, line outside on those poles, we wouldn't need the government or the uh, bankers for anything. In other words, going back to what Richard Kelly Hoskins, I, I am sure that you've uh, heard of or met Richard Kelly Hoskins. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. He said that the uh, basis of all civilization is the self-sufficient family farm. And isn't that really what uh, Waco was? I mean, they were putting together a church, a church and a self-sufficient family farm, and they had arms, and they had guns, they sold guns. That was how they made a living. Yes, you're absolutely correct about that. That was a horrible thing. I remember that, was, that happened back when you were still publishing Free American Magazine. 
and I was doing my Eagle newsletter, which also was by mail, that that happened. I was watching television. The morning that happened, I got to actually see what happened, and they massacred them is what they did. Yes, sir. And that's why I got in on this. This is why I started the militia. This is why I started the Free American. I just said there's something not right here. I can't sit back and watch it. Now, if uh, the the way I modified my plan is uh, we we carved out these cities. We carved out this neighborhood here out of farmland, out of ranch land. Why can't we go back to that? Why can't we bring the country into the city? And uh, I know all the standard issues from the, uh, you know, from the brokers or the neighborhood association or the zoning department. Oh, that's that's ugly to put that windmill on your roof. That's ugly to have those uh, solar panels on the roof. And what it actually is, is uh, why they don't want you getting 70 miles to the gallon. They'll destroy your car if you get 70 miles to the gallon. They want to keep you dependent on the energy. They want to keep you dependent on that gasoline. They want you to, they and they want to keep you dependent on the food. So if we turned our backyards into gardens, if we united one neighborhood, just one block, if we got them to work together, I don't care whether they're Christian, Jews, or, or Muslims. You want to grow food. You want to be productive. You want to, you know, what they what they're trying to do is make us into good slaves, and we're not productive anymore. Uh, over in Taiwan, you got a bunch of Chinese in a in a little back room there putting computers together. Why can't we put solar panels together? Why can't we put windmills together? I've seen some beautiful windmills right here in Corpus Christi. In Corpus Christi, they got beautiful windmills. Why can't we do that? So many things can be done that, again, the powers that be, whatever you want to call them, don't want because it's cut into the profit motive. And uh, to have efficient power, all of that, again, uh, Tesla, if he hadn't have been suppressed, he probably would have been killed eventually. But they don't want any of those things. There are miracles of manufacturing that could be produced and things we could be doing right here in the city, in a, a small city, a big city, could be done, but we're not doing. We seem to be going in the opposite direction and uh, trying to manipulate and uh, guide people away from knowing anything at all. America is so dumbed down. And that's basically through the public schools. And I'm not opposed to public schools. I, uh, uh, I, I don't have any children anymore of that age. But if I did, I would want to homeschool them for sure. Now, we've got a, we've got a thing laid out for this. Uh, it, it, and it's actually a work. In Oklahoma, they've got a food co-op over there, and they are putting the small farmers together with the pity of people in the cities. You join the co-op for 50 bucks, and you go on the website, uh, you uh, order the food that you want from the farmer that you want, who's growing this, who's growing that. It's just a matter of databases. It's really just a matter of databases. And... Uh, if you if you put the co-op together, then you've got the opportunity to buy bulk items, buy wholesale. You uh, what can you produce in your garage? And I've just been going over over uh, a ton of information on these uh, magnetic generators, on uh, these uh, uh, alternate uh, power sources. And I believe that we've had the technology to do that for a hundred years. Uh, and Nikola Tesla, you know, certainly uh, contributed a lot to our current society. But all of his work was taken over by uh, 
Morgan. And he's been surprised. I went to a Tesla convention in Albuquerque, and there was no, uh, there was no, uh, Tesla machinery there. I asked about it. I asked about it, and they said, uh, it's against the law. It's against the NSA. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do this. So, is, uh, and the people, uh, when I mentioned the whole Liberty Village, said, turn your backyard into a garden. You don't like gardens? How about your neighbor? But does your, you see your neighbor in the yard all the time? Maybe you could cut a deal. Well, you help me with my garden here, and uh, we'll split the crop. That's uh, the power of barter. This is what we're talking about, the oldest thing. Now, there's also uh, other means of exchange that are popping up. Ithaca hours, mile high money, mile high hours, and um, they just uh, did this in a community and a county and uh, in uh, California too. So it's it's taking the that's the individuals and the people taking the power away from the big banks and the big corporations. I think that's a good plan. What do you think? I think it's a great. I think it's a great plan. I always wish that more people felt that way. But like I said, most Americans are so dumbed down. They're uh, as long as there's food in the supermarket and gas at the gas station, they don't much care what else happens. I hate to say it that way, but it seems to be true that a lot of Americans, too many don't really give a darn about what's going on, and they don't want to look at new ideas, they're afraid of that. A lot of cities won't let you put a garden in, uh, and again, uh, they're against solar panels, they're against any kind of a wind generation stuff, they don't want it to be put up, because it cuts into the profit margins of the towers that be, and they're not really, it's not going to allow it, but unfortunately most Americans don't really see that. I hope more people are listening to programs like this so that they will wake up and see what's going on and look and see that we have alternatives, like you're talking about, Clay. We have alternatives, we're just not being perceived properly at all. Well, it's it's uh, the divide and conquer, and uh, the uh, I mean uh, the uh, bankers, the with their little CIA uh, operations and their uh, black operations, uh, they uh, one of the things they do are demonize anybody that's trying to tell you the truth. Now, I'm not good with mechanics. I can't repair a Harley. I can't tear it down, and put it back together again. I can ride the hell out of it. But uh, there are people out there that can do that. And there are people out there that have invented uh, carburetors. I know them personally. You know, and have been threatened and tried to put out of business. So if you're alone, and this is really, uh, you know, what happened to me, suddenly I was alone. Suddenly I didn't have any backup. Suddenly all I had was enemies surrounding me. Enemies trying to steal what I got, and I, got, I had every every gun I ever owned was stolen. Every weapon I had was stolen. Every uh, a lot of computers have been stolen because I can't be in two places at once. The same thing happened to Eustace Smalls. We talk about all the time. We say I went to the store, man. I went to the store and I came back and all of my stuff was gone. All of my writing was gone. And they are really, uh, it seems to me, it's not a warrior, you know, one bullet stops a warrior, but you shoot me and my words continue. And so they're afraid of people like you and I, especially ones that aren't afraid to talk about what's going on. We seem to be yeah, their I biggest had, enemies. I had another uh, second president uh, here in Corpus Christi. And uh, when I began writing about Freemasons and Illuminati and all of that, that uh, I, it's a place that I use as an office where I could be alone and write. Sometimes I would even sleep over there. But uh, I came in one day, the house had been broken into, 
uh, a lot of valuable things that they could have taken, that the regular burglars could have taken and off to the hop shop and all that, were not touched. But my computer and, and uh, my, uh, what then was the desktop, and two laptops were gone. So somebody was giving me a warning, I suppose, it would seem that way. The the problem, and, and I can't I can't identify the source of it. Is it religion? Is it drugs? I mean, we're the most drug country in the world, and, and I'm not talking about smoking marijuana. You got 60 million people out there that are saying to smoke marijuana. And by the way, their psychologists are doing studies that say that three quarters of the people in the country are leaning towards a conspiracy theorists rather than conventional wisdom. Yeah. So we are making progress. You know, you can't see it because we're kind of isolated. Without us uh, doing this neighborhood watch thing, this neighborhood co-op thing, and I'll try to make that easy for you. I'll try to do flyers. So you don't have to sell nothing. All you got to do is go hand a flyer to a neighbor. And maybe we don't even need you to do that because uh, we've got email programs that go by zip codes. So. The uh, uh, I think the thing is, Harold, if we if we don't stop, if we continue to oppose these new world order types, these stockbroker types, the people that want you to take your money and put it in some stock that you don't know anything about, some company that you don't know anything about, these are people that are trying to get over on you. These are the people. You know, stockbrokers, investment bankers, anybody that's sucking up to those kind of people, those kind of criminals, they'll be hung. They'll just be hung, and they certainly don't belong uh, out in, uh, in in public trying to influence people. Invest in your neighborhood. Invest in your home. Invest in your friends. You know, that's one thing I actually uh, got to say about the Jews out there. They always work together. They don't let a Jew go broke. And, and so the so-called Christians and uh, these uh, s people that are pushing stocks, well, watch the stocks, watch the stocks. There's as much of a criminal as the uh, banker that's loaning you that money on uh, that at, at, at you service rates, I think. What do you think? I think they're, I think they're worse. Yeah, they're, they're very evil, and you are so very correct in what you trying to say, I just hope that more people can listen and hear the truth about what, what we are saying. And again, let me let me repeat that, and you hear this all the time on RBN and all these other networks, you got hosts uh, attacking hosts, any, any host that's attacking anybody on this network for anything, settle it in private. But if you want to put down me for because I want to talk about Jews, if you want to talk about, uh, if, if you want to get upset for somebody because they're a Christian, you know, take a hike, man. We don't need you. You're just making trouble. I don't care what your religion is. If it works for you, no problem. I don't want to go in and, uh, and, and take over somebody's religion. I don't want a bunch of followers. I ride a Harley. I like uh, riding it by myself or with one person on the back. I don't need a crowd around me. But I don't mind chipping in and helping a neighbor, helping another uh, host if they've uh, if they've had some problems. I don't mind helping my neighbors. But uh, I'm not out there trying to destroy them either. I'm not trying to belittle them. I'm not trying to make them look foolish. You know, unless of course you're, you know, trying to sell stock or insurance or, or some of that other, or, or hell, I, I can loan you some money. I can loan you some. You know, I think we got to get back to barter. And in the next few weeks, Harold, I'm going to have on people that are doing the mountain hours, that are doing the Ithaca hours. They'll, uh, they'll be on my show, and we'll see if there's an alternative. It's hard to fight the Fed if you're using federal money, isn't it? Well, yes. Yeah. It is. I, I look forward to you having those people on. That's what we need to hear about. Stuff like that. Creative uh, 
solutions to what the plagues us so much. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing easy out there, Harold. It's, it's not easy. We've been, uh, uh, you studied history. Can you give me a point in time, a point in history, when it was easy to be free? No, it's never been easy. Well, I always had to be willing to stand up. And, and defend freedom when we need to. And I hope that uh, America is still willing to do this. I think some are. And I hope that many of them, I hope that they're trying to listen to this and programs like this. And because the time will come when we will have to do that again. Well, I, I believe all of the things that we're talking about right now, the energy devices, you know, the uh, uh, the wind or, or the solar, all that's available, all the technologies out there. We can do this. We can convert it. I've had wind generators. I've had gardens. I've had all this at one time. And... Uh, so, and, and I, 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 as I go through the internet, Harold, I see, I see people like uh, that uh, family in, uh, I believe it's Pasadena, California. They got a backyard, they turned into a garden. They own one tenth of an acre in Pasadena, in the middle of LA. And they're producing 6,000 pounds of food there. They're being productive. People that are turning out windmills or generators, I mean, you can turn a windmill, you can make a wind generator out of 250-gallon uh, barrels, a uh, torch, and the uh, rear axle from a uh, wrecked car. A couple of alternators. You can charge up batteries. And as we, as we study this, and uh, we've got the Internet in front of us, I, I, one of the people I'm going to be uh, have on my show in a few days is uh, Peter Lindman. Uh, he's got free energy. He talks about the magnets. He talks about the uh, the other things uh, that uh, they simply don't want you to know about. So, and, and I've talked to people at the Tesla convention. I said, well, why don't you build one of these generators and uh, sell the electricity back to the power companies? They said, if we do that, they come out and raid us and take uh, take our generators away. So so uh, we're, we're being suppressed, and again, most Americans don't really are not really aware of the amount of suppression and oppression that's going on. They just are not. When we, get, you know, it, it's uh, the the conspiracy, uh, as J. Edgar Hoover put it, is so vast that we just have a uh, real hard time accepting. It. But uh, it's also hard uh, for people to imagine. Well, how can we fight the Rothschilds? How can we fight the Morgans? How can we fight the Rockefellers? You can. Yeah, that do is one. That is one side of it. People that, that are overwhelmed when they consider who the enemy is and the power that they have. They don't see how we can really do anything. While on the other hand, you got people who just who don't know what's going on and don't give a darn. So uh, both both are positions that are frightening, really. Well, somebody told me once, Harold, that uh, we've really uh, got more power than we think we do. They've got less power than they want you to think they do. Because uh, if they had all the power that they wanted, we'd still be under the uh, Syrian Empire, the Roman Empire, or the English Empire. Right. Yes. Yes, I think you're right about that. That's, uh, I like to hear you say that. 
I, I don't want to depress anybody. I don't want to upset anybody. If I tell you the Jewish money changers are stealing your money, that's not an insult to all Jews. You know, if I tell you that somebody is a criminal because, here, look what they've done. Look what, look what the records say. Look what the police record says. Look what the police report says. If these bankers are criminals, it really doesn't matter whether they're Jewish. I don't know who wrote the uh, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and I don't think it makes any difference. Because whoever wrote it's dead, been around for 200 years. What matters is who is using that to create this one world government under uh, Satan. Uh, or, uh, you know, and, and basically, you know, Harold, I've got a little uh, different cosmology. I say if you're, uh, if you're uh, omniscient, omnipotent, you can know everything and you can do anything. You know, the, uh, what are you? The standard answer that I get is God. Well, you're God. Well, I think you'd have to be just bored to tears. So, uh, so what do you do? I mean, you can do everything, you know everything. You're basically the force. I think if you get down to what God is, that's the force that holds the atoms together, yours, mine, and the universe's. And, uh, it's it's uh, handled so perfectly. You have to you have to give it credit for being uh, highly intelligent. It's created our DNA. It's created what we were, what we are, and uh, we're given free will, and we're basically given amnesia. So we never know that somehow, on a on a vibrational level, on an electronic level. You know, or as, uh, as uh, Tesla said, my brain is only a receiver, and the universe is a core from which we obtain knowledge. There's one of the uh, smartest uh, men and the best uh, inventors in the world telling you exactly what I'm trying to tell you. You know, we, uh, we call that little bit of God. God puts a little bit of his divinity in it. We call it the soul. We call it consciousness. We got the choice to be good or evil. If you want to put down your your uh, friends, the, your co-workers, you know, if you want to put them down for some of the things that they believe, then you are sinking to the lower level of the vibrational energy, and that's what love is, folks. Your level of vibrational energy. That means that you, be, you you can, without even thinking about it, just by your words and your actions, you can slide in to supporting the satanic beings that want to rule your life, that want you to be a good slave and uh, not be their master. It's, a lot of times it's our families. I, I've heard this so much over the last 25 years. My wife thinks I'm crazy. My father-in-law hates me uh, because... Uh, I, I, I told them what you said. I told them what you talked about. I told them about the chemtrails. I told them about the uh, Monsanto. And and so it's our own people, our own families, our own neighbors that simply don't get it. Yes, that is very true. It's, it's our own people who simply don't get it. I think, you know, on the positive side, I think more people are waking up. Internet is responsible for some of that, and that Internet radio, like people are listening to us right now, that that is waking more people up. We can only hope to get all the gods that this will continue to be. People need to wake up and realize that the powers that be powerful, that they, they so much are, they're not in the seat, they're not undefeatable. They can be defeated if enough people want to do that and have the, the courage and the, the willingness to do it. It's, uh, it, it seems to, it, it, it's really not that hard. I mean, I, I, I don't see where the difficulty comes. Again, maybe it's uh, drugs, maybe it's fluoride, Maybe it's because you've been to college and been programmed, you know. Maybe it's because you watch TV uh, too much. But uh, 
the answers are out there, and uh, I'm going to, I've been covering, you know, I, I interviewed Joe Newman, he was on the Today Show with Johnny Carson, had a magnetic generator, still got it sitting in his backyard in Louisiana, and he shuffled off, I've got a, I had a signed copy of his, uh, of his book for years, I've interviewed all these people, I've met all these people, I met Paul Pantone, and I can tell you Pantone, one of the, again, one of the brightest guys out there, certainly didn't belong in an insane asylum. It took us two years to get him out of an insane asylum because they were trying to uh, torture him and uh, get his patents. He wouldn't sign over the patents. Uh, he's out now, but he still had to move, uh, change states three times to produce the GEET device. And he's got, uh, he's got uh, schools that he set up all over uh, the world, you know, teaching people how to build uh, that carburetor. And I believe me, I know how they work. My uh, father-in-law, Lloyd Conrad, recreated the Pogue carburetor from the uh, post. And that uh, Hender shot motor, they got the whole patent up there. So anybody that's into electronics, anybody that understands uh, uh, you know, how to make a coil, how to wrap a coil, could build one of these motors. So we're, but we're too busy. We're just too busy. I gotta go out and, and, and make enough money to pay for all that gasoline that I'm gonna use driving back and forth to work. You know, I, my suggestion here with the, with the Liberty Villages is you've already got a house, you got a structure, you got shelter, make it productive. Make it pay for itself. Not that house. You don't have to rent it out to make money. A lot of people do that. They buy a house and then they rent it out. But what if you turn that house, uh, covered it with solar panels, and made that house either save you 200 bucks a month or make you 200 bucks a month? Why couldn't we do that? Neighborhood of I like to hear you talk. Yes, that, that, is, that is what we what people need to realize that the possibilities are endless when it comes down to it. It's, uh, well, you know, we're here in uh, Corpus Christi, and I'll give you a call later, and we'll, uh, we'll make some arrangements and, uh, to get together. And, uh, I, I plan on doing a flyer. That flyer that I'm going to do for you folks proposes this idea. You know, whatever you can build, whatever you can make. I mean, uh, you know, if you're making jewelry, then put the jewelry up on the uh, co-op website and sell it through that. We're going to be targeting people. so. Maybe we've got an alternative from using uh, you, uh, Federal Reserve notes. Maybe we can use Mountain Hours. I've got some of their uh, designs up on my website, and they're kind of pretty. They're kind of pretty. I don't know. Uh, don't know. Uh, and if it's uh, run through a co-op, so we know how much is there, we can pretty much uh, offset any uh, attempts uh, at counterfeiting. And uh, if you're growing really great tomatoes and you want to trade it to your uh, neighbor for the green beans that he got in his backyard, I don't know. I think that's a productive use of our time, a productive use of our energy, and a productive use of the property that we've got. And uh, if you don't want to go up against the zoning board, you might as well crawl in that hole and suck your ass in uh, and... Uh, Work for the new world order. Take a salary. You know, work for the uh, work for AT and T while they're tapping your phone. And if you uh, if you don't want to work for AT and T, or give Verizon a few hundred bucks every month when they decide uh, that you've used too much time, you can check out Free American and go to Solovey and uh, sign up for Solovey and get your uh, unlimited calling, unlimited text for $49 a month. As a matter of fact, I think there's a special on right now if you go to Free American and send it up. And also, Harold, you've got a book out. I want you to tell us about this book because this is what 
Carol and I do for a living. We write books just like John D. McDonald, just like Robert A. Heinlein, uh, just like uh, all of the uh, authors from Jules Verne on. We write books. Now, the Jews don't want you to, in the New World, whether they're Jews, whether they're Muslims, you know, Alex, uh, if you listen to Alex Jones, uh, he'll tell you the Muslims run Hollywood. That's not what uh, the Jews who run Hollywood brag about. But uh, it really uh, it, it really doesn't matter who runs things. If you get down, I've got books. They're enjoyable. According to uh, the lawyers uh, that uh, they uh, tried to, to tried to stop me, I write just like John D. McDonald, and I got a series out like that. That's what I got. I got books to sell. You go to shop.freeamerican.com, order a book. You can get a PDF. If you like it, you can get a hard copy signed. And uh, Harold, tell me about your book now. You've got and you've got more than one. You've been on my show for many years here. Now I'm being on. Go ahead, sir. I'll mention, I'll mention two of them quickly. The newest one is the one about Islam, lifting the veil, exploring Islam. Go to publishamerica.com. Learn my last name, R-H-O-M-E, Rome, R-H-O-M-E, and you will find it there and can buy it. And also, uh, I uh, uh, publish in Barnes Review Magazine, and uh, in 2011, they published my book. From the Temple to the Talmud, which is the history of, of the Jewish religion and the Jewish people. Go to BarnesReview.org. Again, run my name in the search part of it, R H O M E, and you'll come up with a review of the book and all of that. And you can simply just email me. I hope that many of you will. And again, my email address is Eagle New Hill. Eagle News Tips at AOL.com, Eagle News Tips at AOL.com, and uh, we'll have a lot to say to one another, and uh, I can tell you more about the books and other books that will be useful to get, as well as slave books. So thank you for letting me get a plug in there, sir. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I've got other books that I'm working on here that are about a... Uh, Atlantean civilization, and the Gnostics, uh, the uh, text that you talk about, they talk about that. They talk about a advanced civilization. We've got Indian, uh, Indian uh, civilizations, Indian writings that uh, the Vedas, I believe, that talk about Vimanas, flying ships, uh, flying ships, and. Uh, in my opinion, uh, whoever built the pyramids all the way around the world were one people that were in advance. Now you can call them, uh, you can call them uh, fallen angels. You can call them uh, ancient aliens. You can call them ever. Well, I personally believe the civilization started on this planet. And if there's any aliens out there, we sent them that way. We sent them out there. But. Uh, I, I wrote that as science fiction some time ago. I also wrote about uh, the uh, separation of states, the legalization of uh, drugs in this country, and the uh, in the uh, uh, short time in the future. It was really science fiction when I wrote it 45 years ago, doing time in a Texas prison for marijuana. It was really science fiction then, but now you've got Colorado where you can grow hemp again. You can grow. You can go to Colorado and smoke pot there without going to prison for it. So, uh, uh, was I writing science fiction or was I seeing into the future? <laughs> oh, I think you were seeing into the future for sure. Uh, absolutely. And what about the past? I mean, uh, the way I put it is that. Uh, you know, we had uh, we had people on this planet that were capable of levitation, that were capable of anti-gravity, that were capable of, uh, you know, powering, uh, reaching, uh, extracting uh, power from the universe, and uh, and flying around in what we call UFOs. Well, 
I mean, was that yeah. was that fiction or was I remembering ten thousand years ago? It's longer ago than that, I'm sure. But a lot of people, oh, I don't think I want to believe that. But really, when you think about it, and you think about archaeology and the science, that a civilization that's 100,000 years old, really, there's not going to be that much left of it nowadays. Well, you find some certain things, and uh, like you talk about, there's been cities, ancient cities in Africa, and uh, uh, archaeologists discovering new things every day that lead us in that direction and that ancient, advanced civilizations existed on this planet. I believe that very thoroughly. Well, I uh, I also believe, and uh, I'm a fan of science fiction. I read all of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan, John Carter Mars. I read all of Robert A. Heinlein's, Isaac Asimov's, and uh, John B. MacDonald. So, uh, you know, read every every uh, science fiction book in the Forward Public Library before I was 14. I think I'm qualified to write good fiction. And I have to go direct because somebody out there don't want you, but don't want these ideas put into your head. I guess that's a, the kindest way. They don't want you thinking about freedom. They don't want you thinking about, why do I have to do that again? You know? Why did you want me to get on my knees? To, uh, what's the purpose of getting on my knees and sticking my nose in the dirt? What's the purpose of that? And let's finish up here. We've got uh, about ten minutes left. Let's finish up. What about Islam? How we? How do we deal with that? Mentally, I mean, maybe it's about fixing herself. Now, if we fix your neighborhood up, I don't care if everybody in Dearborn is Muslim and they want to get out in the middle of the uh, street three times a day and pray to Mecca. I don't care about that. As long as they're not blocking my thoroughfare, as, not, as long as they're not blocking my access to facilities, I don't care what they do. And I pretty much feel the same way about the whole gay thing, you know. I don't... Uh, uh, I... Uh, you know, what you do in your bedroom, what you do in your home with consenting adults, none of my business. I don't care. I agree with you completely on both those things. You know, to me, all this gay marriage stuff that's going on is basically a way of distracting Americans so that they don't think about more important things. And uh, Islam can be a positive in many people's lives, it is, but unfortunately, it seems to be a militant religion, and uh, its goal seems to be to take over when it can. And is that what they're going to try to do here in the United States? That's what they've done everywhere else. Again, again, I'm going to uh, pick off a lot of people by saying this. And already I get emails that, oh, uh, I live in a Muslim country, it's a wonderful country, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sure you're right, but on the other hand, uh, Islam is a force that we have to deal with. And uh, I would like to see a group of Islamic peace activists come forward, but I don't see where they are. I would like to, I would like to know them. I would like to have uh, dialogue and talk with them. But I don't know where they are. Maybe uh, someone in the Muslim community will come up with this and, uh, and uh, bring forward a, a Islamic peace movement that will try to make peace between all religions and allow all religions to create this without fighting among them. That would be the best way of all. Well, and the article that I'm writing and the uh, plan that I'm proposing here, and we'll be covering that, folks, all this uh, the rest of this week. All the rest of this week. We'll be talking about solutions. We'll be talking about the money. And uh, I, I want to get I want to get people 
that are building the farms, that are doing new farms, that have discovered new techniques. You know, there's a gentleman over in California or Oregon or in Oregon or Washington or Northern California there that says uh, you don't need to plow up the yard. You don't need to destroy all the fulvic acid and the minerals and the uh, soil. All you got to do is plant the seeds and cover them with wood chips and uh, they'll grow, your, your food will grow just like it grows in the, uh, in the jungles, in the, uh, in the forest. Trees put down a cover for it, the grounds kept moist, and the uh, worms stay active, and uh, you start getting healthy food. I, I think uh, by concentrating on the food and the water, now I've got filtering systems that you can filter the fluoride out, you can filter radioactivity out, that's up on my side. And uh, this is what the uh, this is what the co-op will do. Here, here's people. You can check them out yourself. You know, it's not. I'm not trying to push uh, anybody one brand or anything. This is the best one I found in my research. This is what I found. I don't take advertising, and neither does uh, Revolution. This is the strong point about Revolution. We may not agree on everything. We may not. Uh, we we may not even like each other, but. You know, hey, you know, I don't like doctors. I don't like doctors, but I know Dr. Carly is a great woman and, and uh, doing good work because she stepped out of the system. So we, uh, there, there's a lot of people, I may not want to do what they do. I, I'm, I don't work on cars. I don't work on mechanics. I don't work on motorcycles. But I sure depend on the ones that do. And what I do and what Harold does is research, and we put that down in books and uh, in words, and they're available. And I'll have two more books for sale now. I've got three books now, and Harold's got several books, all of which you should read. It gives you an insight into a little different way of thinking. I mean, that's really it, isn't it? The, the degree in which you have to change your thinking, Harold, is really incredible. It's, a, it's, it's not that much. It's not that hard. You know, it's like one of the uh, hosts says, uh, says on there, you know, you know, Clay and I might be friends, you know, if we weren't slapping the hell out of each other. Maybe so. Maybe so. But maybe we got to get past that point. And uh, a, a lady uh, that I, I really respect, she gave me some insight. I said, how do we fight evil without becoming evil? She said, don't fight. Now, if the game is rigged, it doesn't do much good to fight against a corrupt system because the game's rigged. The dice are loaded. So maybe the way we combat this is by becoming productive, and working together and using each other's skills and each other's knowledge. I've been to 49 states, folks. If I write about a bar in Bimini, I've been there. I'm just like Louis L'Amour on that. And Harold, you, uh, you're, you're, you're a writer too, and uh, you've been there. You've got the experience. That's why we write, folks. We're not just... Uh, you know, people accuse me, Harold, of uh, being my character. Not, not you. That character's you, isn't it, Clay? No, no, no. My character is Trevor Cameron. He's named after my sons, and he's uh, younger, stronger, better looking, got more money, and killed more people than I have. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but it still makes for good reading. And what, what part's real and what part's imagination? You know... That's for you to figure out. Harold Rome is my guest. Give me out your website again, Harold, and all that will be up on my site. FreeAmerica.com. Yes, it is. It's NazicLiberationFront.com. That's G-N-O-S-T-I-C. NazicLiberationFront.com. And you can just also email me at EagleNewsTips, EagleNewsTips at AOL.com. Uh, and please do that. We'll have much to say. All right.
right, sir. We're out of time here. Go to shop.freeamerican.com. Go to clay at freeamerican.com. Send me an email. If you want to be a part of Liberty Villages, send me an email. Tell me what you can do. Tell me what you got to offer. Tell me what you can produce. A time to stop being consumers. That's what the television is about. Consume this drug. It's good for you, but 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 check with your doctor to make sure you're healthy enough to take it. Otherwise, it'll kill you. <laughs> good luck, guys. Thank you, Harold. I appreciate you being with me. God bless you. Thank you, sir.